Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. In today's episode, I want to show you how to disable the Write Protect switch on your Apple disk drives. Now, you might ask, why would you want to do this? Well, one reason is, if you have old disks from back in the day, say a DOS system master disk or a copy of Karateka, a lot of these disks can go bad with age and you might want to rewrite the disk itself without having to punch an ugly notch in the side of it. Another example is the new Nox Archaeist game, which comes on four floppy disks. Now these are only notched on one side, but there's data on both sides of the disk. And recently Mark Lemmert actually issued an update to the game, so if you've already gotten your floppy disks, you might want to be able to write the new game version onto it without having to, again, punch notches. So let's get started. We're gonna take a look at two disk drives today to modify. The first one is the original disk two drive, which came out in 1978. Then the next one that we're gonna take a look at is the Apple 5.25 drive, and this came out around the same time as the Apple IIe, and there was a lot of variations to this drive. There was a slightly different one for the Apple IIe Platinum, and then there was also the Duo Disc version, which was essentially just two of these side by side. These have very different mechanisms inside them for disabling the right protect switch, and hopefully if your drive is similar to one of these two, then you should be able to figure out how to do this for your own drives. There's at least two different types of write protect switches that are used on these floppy drives. Essentially, the technique is to measure in some way whether there is a notch in the disk or not, like this. So the two different techniques that I've seen are either a mechanical switch or an optical switch. The old disk 2 drives use a mechanical switch, and in fact, when you insert a disk, you can actually hear it. So when I push this in, you can just hear it where it depresses a switch, and then once I have it all the way in, then the switch pops back up because this is actually has a notch in it, so it's not right protected. If I flip the disc over and put it in, now that switch is going to be depressed because there's no notch. If we take the cover off the disc to, it's easier to see. To take the cover off, you just have to remove the four screws on the bottom of the drive and then just slip the case off the back. Once we've taken the cover off the disc too, on the left hand side you can actually see the switch and if I just turn it over on its side here, this is the right protect switch down here and if I stick a screwdriver in here you can actually see how it works. So as the disc comes in, it depresses this lever here which engages a switch and then once the disc goes all the way in and the notch goes over the switch, then this will just pop back up and disengage the switch itself. Right. Now, conveniently for us, when they designed this disc two drive, they actually included a way to calibrate the switch itself. And presumably this was just for uh, tolerances at the factory so that they could adjust the height of it to make sure it was actually correct. However, what you can do is actually just unscrew these screws and then just move it down so it's completely disengaged. So to do that, all you need to do is just unscrew one of the screws at the front and then you can usually just shove it down with the screwdriver itself and then just tighten it back up. And what this will do is this will actually move the context switch far enough out of the way so that when you insert a disc, the lever arm never gets pushed down far enough to engage that switch. So now you can go ahead and put in a right protected floppy and it will just happily think that there's a notch in the disc. So that one's totally straightforward. Now some of these, instead of having screws, they'll have little hex nuts. So you might have to have a little hex driver uh, to turn those. Now let's turn to the other disk drive. This is the Apple 5.25 inch drive. The model number is A9M0107. And this one actually uses a optical switch to detect whether there is a right protect disk in there or not. 
So instead of using a mechanical approach to disable the switch on this one, we're actually just going to use a little trick on the circuit board. So to take this one apart, you have four screws on the bottom, and then there's two screws on the back, which are recessed in these little holes. And once you have those six screws out, you should be able to just pull up the case and then slide it away from the housing. The next thing that we're going to have to do is remove the plate on top of the circuit board and that's just held on by a single screw. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're taking this screw off, it also holds down a ground connector here so when you're putting it back together make sure to put that in. Once you've got that off you should be able to lift up on the metal shield there and just pull it off like that. And now we can see the Unidisc analog board that's in here. And then finally over here, we can actually see the right protect sensor itself. This is a combination of an optical light source on one side and a sensor on the other side. And then it just sends the signal through to the analog board whether there is a notch in the disc or not. So one thought that you might have is, well, maybe there's a way to actually mechanically disable this, like pull out the optical switch. The tricky part about that is, is it actually has to still maintain a path between the two for the sensor to uh, think that there's a notch. However, I did some research online on Apple Fritter, and there was actually a post from 2013 by a user named Kiata who had a really clever hack to disable this. And if you look on the circuit board itself, there's a little jumper wire called J29, and then right above that is a resistor at position R12. And the trick is, if you actually just jump those two wires from there to there, that'll fool it into thinking that there's actually a closed circuit there on the optical sensor. So all you need to do is put just a jumper wire between the resistor at R12, and you want to do this on the left-hand side of the board, and then just hook that up to this junction J29 right there, just like that. And obviously if you wanted to make this permanent, you could just solder a wire between those two, but for now, let's just leave it like that. So let's go ahead and we'll just give it a try. I'm going to go ahead and boot up a copy of Copy2 Plus here. So this is a non right protected disc here. All right, and now that we have our jumper wire there, I'm just going to go ahead and format the disc. So I'm just going to take the disc out, and now I'm going to flip it over. So this side here is not notched. So normally, we wouldn't be able to format this, and it would just give us an error. However, now we can just say Format, ProDosk, Yes, I'm ready to format, and yes, let's give it a name. All right, and you can just tell by the sound that it is successfully formatting that drive. All right, so we were able to successfully write that disk now. If you had a copy of Karateka that actually was corrupt for some reason, you could use this trick to make a new copy of it without having to punch any horrible holes in the disc itself. Alright, I hope you learned how easy it was to disable the right protect switch on your Apple disk drives. If you have a slightly different model, please feel free to put a comment below showing how to disable the right protect switch on your drive so other people can find that. Just a reminder, the Knox Archaeist game has been released and I'll have a link in the show notes to where you can pick up a digital copy or actually a collector's edition while they're still around. Also, if you'd like to support my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me even more, I have a Patreon and I'll have a link in the show notes to that. Once again, thanks for watching.